Hey there guys and welcome to the next speedrun interview. I am interviewing someone named M Karma from the Hobbit speedrun community. And now, let's get started. Why did you start speedrunning? Well, when I think about it, um, it all started when I was probably around 14 and I had this, uh, this phase where I got into watching YouTube Let's Plays and whatever. And one of the first I watched was like Paper Mario and then it took me down the pipeline eventually watching a Mario 64 Let's Play, and I think in there, speedrun was mentioned. So I looked it up, I saw speedruns, I was pretty amazed, and eventually I, I stumbled across, um, not Twitch at the time, I think it was still Justin TV at that time, not entirely sure, but a speedrunner called Alex SM 64 was on there, this Greek guy. Unfortunately, he doesn't really speedrun anymore, but he was extremely funny, entertaining, and he was like, he was making his way up, and I thought it was awesome. So, you know, starting with that, I, I gave SM64 a try. I gave a bunch of other games a try, like 3D Land on my 3DS, just ILs. And uh, I was interested in the Minish Cap. I was interested in Wind Waker. I was also interested in Ocarina of Time. And I, I, I ran like most of those, um, but not to completion. I never really stuck with many of them for too long. And uh, one of the, the speedrunners that I was chatting with on Twitch at the time, uh, yeah, because some time passed and then it did become Twitch for sure, was Simple Flips. And we started racing uh, some of these games, like OOT races. And basically, I looked up to Simple Flips. He was a lot better at these games than I was. And one day, he started speedrunning The Hobbit after having found it on Speed Demos Archives. Uh, he found a thread about it, about some glitches on it and that was by ace prune this was the moment that i like really got into speedrunning because i thought okay that's cool nobody's really running this game yet simple is running it and we kind of had this this thing going so i thought okay fun i'll run it too and then simple and i went back and forth and that that was the first speedrun that really stuck with me and because of that that whole like interaction that whole growing together with the game that's when i I feel like I really started speedrunning. Everything else was just dabbling with it. But that moment with The Hobbit, where it just stuck, was uh, for sure the actual start start. What games are you currently speedrunning, and what games do you plan on speedrunning in the future? Um, so currently, I'm still speedrunning The Hobbit, albeit I'm, I'm a little inactive now. I'm actually on my way of getting back into uh, Console Hobbit, because one of the goals there uh, is looking a lot more achievable thanks to some some small discoveries and in general it was already something I was looking to do but I won't get into too many specifics on that uh, also when I go back into PC Hobbit uh, if you don't know I'm currently <laughs> 0.1 second off of world record in PC Hobbit which is kind of awesome and maybe cool for a future you know update video on the Hobbit history video um, so I'm still mainly sticking with Hobbit I've Never really stuck with a game like Hobbit at all. I've dabbled with more speed games over my time after running The Hobbit. And maybe there will be something that'll truly grasp me in the future again. But for now, if I do speedrun something, it's a small thing. Like, um, I was interested in speedrunning A Link Between Worlds when that came out for a little bit. Did some ILs in, in Cluster Truck with Shocky. But yeah, I don't have any plans to speedrun anything in the future. I can't rule it out. There will definitely be small things I'll try for fun, but not sure if I'll stick with anything. It's just such a big time commitment, you know? What glitches, skips, and or tricks would you say has been the easiest and also the hardest for you to perform? Ooh, that's a tough one. I think for that for sure we'd be looking at The Hobbit, obviously, as that's something I've had most, most of my speedrunning experience with. Well, for easy tricks, uh, I'm not sure if it's the easiest, but funny because this is uh, something recent. Uh, in The Hobbit, there is the skip for the level inside information in uh, in Console Hobbit. This is a long level where you have to avoid Smog the Dragon, raise the water, and eventually leave after, you know, doing a bunch of quests. But it turned out you could get to the end trigger earlier by going below it, uh, because there's an invisible wall in front of the end trigger, but it doesn't extend all the way down to the end trigger. So with this very precise, precise thingy where you built up momentum by slashing off of the edge, which added the slashes forward momentum to your running momentum, 
and then doing a jump attack, which gave you even more forward momentum mid-air, you could just about sneak under the end trigger. Which at first was really, really hard. Uh, the timing was super strict. There was even some RNG involved with the direction of the slash you got. And if, if you failed it, it was all over. Add to that the, the pressure of a run. It sucked. Now this didn't stay relevant for too long, because when I came back to Console Hobbit, we found a long jump setup. Uh, me and Chalky worked on it together, and that turned out to make it a lot easier already. And suddenly this, this very hard trick that needed multiple timings was now a long jump, and you just kind of had to time the jump attack. But now, go back about a week. Chalky and I hop in the lab again. It's been, say, like... A year, maybe more since the long jump setup now. And uh, turns out you can also do something called a slash cancel, which is a slash you do while running, then you switch to your rocks, which cancels your slash animation, but you cancel it at the point where you get the forward momentum, but not the full sword swing, because in Bilbo's full sword swing animation, he, uh, he eventually stops. But you only want that part before he stops, where he gets that little lunge. So the slash cancel, sword swing, you switch to your rocks instantly, so you only get that little bit of uh, extra boost juice. Turns out that if you line up that slash cancel perfectly off the edge, you don't have to worry about getting a certain angle on the long jump, or previously having to get a, a perfect slash timing or anything. Because the speed you get from a slash cancel is very consistent. So now this trick is just run off the edge with a slash cancel, and then time a jump attack. And the speed lines up even better than it used to, making it not just more consistent in any way, but also making it easier because the jump attack window to actually hit the hit the end trigger is so much bigger. I think that's that's an interesting one because it used to be really hard, and then some things that may have been obvious in res retrospect made it actually quite an easy skip. Are there any games that you were shocked to see other speedrun? In the modern day, no. In the modern day, it almost annoys me that every game gets speedrun. Because I do think there are games that just aren't that interesting to speedrun, and I feel like the motivation behind it might sometimes be just for the sake of putting a speedrun out there instead of for the sake of really wanting to optimize something and maybe enjoying the mechanics. But I could have a wrong read on that. You know, that's just how I would see it if I was going into those games. Um, but... Definitely not in the modern day, maybe more back in the day when it came to, you know, back in the day speedrunning was a little less less public. You know, if you were running a game, then nobody knew about it either way. Like you didn't get the the, the popular YouTube videos like, oh, I speedrun Cooking, Ma Cooking Mama that go viral because uh, it's, it's such a weird thing. But back in the day, like if you speedrun something like that, it was also more hidden, unless you were more, like, in the trenches of the community already. So I think because maybe I was in the trenches already of the... In the earlier days, stuff doesn't really surprise me anymore. I guess, more surprised than shocked. I don't really get RPG speedruns too much. Well, I can get them if I take off my bias goggles. But for me, like, what makes a speedrun interesting is all the deep mechanics you know, glitches, doing what you're not supposed to do. And a lot of RPG speedruns, not every single one, obviously, are more like, okay, you route it out, you have the perfect route, and now you're just gonna execute it, and there is just heaps and heaps of RNG throughout the entire run. Because, you know, a lot of RPGs are notorious for that RNG. So then the only fun part, in my opinion, that's left in, you know, figure out that speedrun is the actual routing process and not the speedrun itself because the speedrun itself is just I'm gonna follow the steps I've written down obviously oversimplifying it there will always be tricks and small things to make it faster but much more than other speedruns it just boils down to you know RNG and that's not fun so yeah I guess I'm a little shocked when I see people run super RNG heavy RPGs because I don't understand I don't get the appeal of it myself, although I kind of do understand that, you know, wanting to perform the route that you spent so much time theory crafting in a game that you might really enjoy. I, I get how that could be fun. What is your biggest goal for speedrunning? 
Um, so I, I've been trying to avoid setting goals, personally. I have made a lot of goals in the past, but I feel like goals have been adding pressure to me that I just do not need. Uh, it's, it's very easy for me to get demotivated if I set a goal, and it's not going that well. It doesn't look like I'll reach it. Um, so I try to avoid it. That's not to say I don't have them. Uh, currently, if I'm looking at The Hobbit, so on GameCube, which I'm planning to return to, the time with loads, so no no load time subtracted, is currently, the world record is at 27 minutes and 13 seconds. I think a sub 27 is something that I would want to get there, but I'm, uh, I'm getting back into it slowly, so I'm not like fully set on that goal, but it's been something that's been on my mind for a while. Then on time without loads on GameCube, uh, the world record is currently sitting at 21 minutes and 39 seconds. Now that's going to be tougher because it's obviously a bigger difference, but getting that down to in the 20 minutes would be would be a lot nicer. Just the classic minute barrier stuff. And then on PC, uh, I'm currently <laughs> 0.1 second behind the world record, and I would like to beat the world record, although I do think this is like the coolest the leaderboard could possibly be right now from like a narrative perspective because in in the history video there's this whole narrative about me and and chalky going uh going back and forth on uh on pc and then it's starting with him always like being a slight step behind me and he's been in this situation where he's been right behind me albeit not as close but now you know after chalky kind of hit his stride i'm the one who's in the back foot I'm just point one behind. So for that narrative sake, you, I almost don't want to go for it. Not that I think I can guaranteed get it, but you know, it's kind of cool looking at the leaderboard like this. But yeah, Hobbit's my only main speed game I'm thinking about right now. So, you know, not that many other goals. Although there has been this thing I've been thinking about, and that is when it comes to making more speedrunning content myself. And uh, that is... <laughs> everyone loved... If you haven't watched the, the Hobbit History World Record video yet, and you're planning to, shameless plug, I know, uh, maybe don't listen to what I'm about to say, but uh, a major twist in the, the World Record History video of The Hobbit is that I was involved with the community all that time under a different username, and I came back at some point, and I am not just, I didn't just come back, I'm also the creator of that video. I think it'd be really cool if I could work myself into more speedrunning communities like that and uh, be part of their history and maybe also tell their story. So let's say, for example, someone makes a, or I make a, a uh, speedrunning history video on, let's say, something more modern, Breath of the Wild. And it turned out that I was actually also a big part in the Breath of the Wild history. I think it'd be fun to kind of get that, keep that going when it came to making content, but that's not super as much a goal as a would-be cool thing. All right, that's the interview, everybody. And you did a wonderful job with your answers, Karma. Very informative, very in-depth. You did a wonderful job, and I am so happy that you became a part of my series. Thanks again. I highly recommend that you guys check out M. Karma's World Record History video on The Hobbit. It is like one of the greatest speedrunning history videos I've ever seen. A very long length with a bunch of informative and entertaining uh, history in the video. You guys really should check it out. So I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. And I'll also leave a link to Karma's Twitch and also YouTube in the description down below. Okay, thanks again for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed it, speed right in that like button as fast as possible. And if you want to see more speed related content, glitch that subscriber button, turn and get gray. Okay, that is it. Thanks again for watching. See y'all next time. Goodbye.